All right, so we're going to set up the EB-1000 on our lovely patient here. Um, so for the EV-1000, remember you can do it two ways. You can do it non-invasively or invasively with an art line. If you're going to be doing setting up your EV non-invasively, then what you're gonna need is a finger probe cover um, and then you just need your machine. If you're setting it up with an A-line, then you're going to need your flow track arterial line set up. So you may or may not already have this on your patient with the A-line. If the patient's getting an A-line and the physician's going to want the EV-1000 set up on them, make sure you grab the set with the flow track. And then otherwise, you're good to go. If you already have an A-line, then you'll have to kind of MacGyver this setup and connect it to your A-line. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the on button for the EV-1000 is in the back. So in the back, you have your power button here. You're gonna go ahead and press that and we'll turn that will turn the machine on. When the machine turns on, it's going to ask you about the patient. It's gonna ask for their ID number, their height, weight, and then if they're male or female. Is it important that these machines stay plugged in when they're not in use? They should stay plugged in. Yes, they should stay plugged in when not in use. And then um, on the back here, we have the plug. So if it's not turning on for some reason, make sure that this is plugged in here and that the machine is plugged in. If it's not plugged in, then obviously it's not going to turn on. We're going to go ahead and put in our patient's information. So go ahead, Candace. So you're gonna have your patient's information. Something to note is that you can switch from inches to centimeters um, and also from pounds to kicks if you need to. Uh, now we'll go ahead and press the home button and right now as you can see it says arterial and central venous so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing from our flow track to our clear sight clear sight is non-invasive so how i did that was all i did was i pressed our sorry i pressed the gray little blurred section here and that's going to allow me to go from flow track to clear sight you can only do this once so make sure that you only have to do it once. So if it's set up in flow track and you need a clear sight, then go for that. But then if the patient ends up getting an arterial line, we're gonna have to switch back to flow track. In that case, basically all that means is that you're gonna have to turn the machine off, turn it back on again, and you're gonna have to reprogram. And you'll lose the current numbers that you have on the clear sight. So just make sure that you have all those numbers, turn off the machine, turn it back on, put in your patient's data, and then you'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and switch to clear sight, and we're gonna press enter. And now what it's going to do is, this screen is for zeroing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect our patient. So we have our finger probe cover. The, there are three sizes. Um, there is small, medium, and large. All of these finger probe covers are going to be on the A side. And what you're going to do is you're just gonna grab the size that's appropriate for the patient. And we'll go ahead and open that up. So we're going to take the pointer finger of the patient. When you undo this, this is all Velcro. You're going to have the green section. This is gonna be where the patient's finger is gonna go. So we're gonna take it and we're going to wrap it around the patient. And as you see here, the finger on top of the, on top of the probe is exactly matching what the patient's is like. And then we have our end here that will connect to the machine. So, for the clear sight, you're going to use the white cord. I'm gonna grab the end here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to connect into cuff one and it will turn green. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to zero. So to zero, all we have to do is align the lines here just like how it shows on our picture. And then we're gonna press zero. You'll hear your nice little chime. And now this end is going to go and slide onto our finger probe here. And then our other end here is going to go at the level of the heart. So you may have your patient's blood pressure cuff or the sleeve of their gown here. We can go ahead and clip that on. And now this is going to be connected for our patient. So as you can see here, place it at the level of the heart and now we're going to go ahead and we can press home 
and we're going to press the start button. Now after a few minutes we'll be getting our numbers but what I want to show you all next is this the screen. So to change this because you may not like how this looks or everybody has their preference you'll go to your nurse's bag and or sorry not your nurse's bag you'll come here to the screens and you can choose from any of these um, some that people like are going to be this one which is going to have uh, all your numbers oh and there are numbers so we have our cardiac output cardiac index stroke volume uh, we see a nice kind of setup of the cardiovascular system we will have our Frank Starling curve here which will kind of pop up in a sec as far as what that number is um, but some people like this just because you get your extra added value, uh, values like their heart rate, your cardiac index, your MAP, stroke volume index, etc. You can change the number of values that you want to see by choosing your 1, 2, 3, or 4 here. So if I wanted 3 values, then I could change that. If you want to change what these um, hemodynamic numbers are giving you, like say instead of cardiac output you want your systolic blood pressure, then what you'll do is you'll click where it says your cardiac output outside of the number and you can choose whichever value you want to see. So if you want to see your systolic pressure, then it, there it is. You are dry, my lady. You need to drink some water. <laughs> this is what a nurse oh looks like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she has always. not... She has not been drinking water. Um, so no. So you press outside. She's like, no, I have it. <laughs> the pressure's usually in the hundreds, though. So. There you go. So that's fine. So we have we can choose whichever value I want. You want. So in this case, what I recommend is doing your cardiac output, cardiac index, your stroke volume for sure. I like this screen, um, but other screens that I definitely recommend using because this is only giving you your values in the second that you're looking at come if you come here and you choose this screen it what it's going to do is it will show you the trends and you can go whichever direction you if you want to go back in time or for or back in time to see like what it, your numbers look like in the morning you can do that um, just so that way if you can catch up on your flow sheet so yes if you ever need a re-zero then just go back to your nurse's bag and you have the zero waveform option there now here our patient does not have CVP we cannot measure CVP non-invasively with this machine we would need to have a CVP set up but we can enter a CVP based off of you know an estimate of what you think your patient is if you think they're overloaded um, underloaded etc then you can put in the value so like with her I would say that she is most likely, you know, dry based off of what her stroke volume Frank Starling curve looked like. So let's do like um, two. And what we're going to do is then we'll press home. I'm going to change this so that way it gives me four values. And so we'll come here and let's go back to the screen. Um, and so what it's going to be doing is calculating what the patient's SVR is. So remember, you need your CVP to calculate your SVR. Here it shows our Frank Starling curve. That's the big reason why I like this screen. Um, but then as you can see, boom, it just, if we simulated this is what her CVP is, this would show what her SVR is, um, which there you go. I dropped to the bottom. And then, and then, <laughs> and then the, her, and then it dropped really on though. And what's nice is it'll show you too um, here, like if they're vasoconstricted or vasodilated. So, oh, look at you, you're bouncing all over the place. Um, but remember, this is non-invasive it's always going to be you know a little bit more accurate if you're doing it invasively if you're using what your ev1000 non-invasively then what it the machine will tell you if your cuff is no longer accurate and you can change your cuff i definitely recommend that if you're using the ev1000 non-invasively that you don't leave it on for hours on end because as you can see look at it, it's just a constant um, it's basically like getting your blood pressure taken continuously, but on your finger. So make sure that if you're using this, that it's kind of, it should be used as kind of like a spot check. Um, it's like, do I still have, do I still have circulation? <laughs> like, yeah. um, but again, you know, there are pros and cons to using it non-invasively. Obviously, if your patient's on multiple pressors, this isn't going to be as accurate as using, you know, an A-line. So your pros, your cons. So, if you are doing your setup invasively, 
Then what you're going to do is you're going to grab, I'm just going to let that keep running on my lovely patient here. You're going to grab your gray cord here. And what this is going to do is you're going to come over to your A-line setup and you're going to plug in your green to green. And then your red is going to plug into the monitor cord. So I have my monitor cord over here. We have our ends that are connected over to the monitor. And then here I'm going to plug in my red. And then if I have CVP set up, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my CVP end. And then all I'm going to do is connect here. So if I had a CVP, it would go right there. And then my machine is, my mo main monitor is going to be getting, you know, still my A-line. It's going to get my CVP, but then this machine is also connected and it will be able to sense those numbers as well. But that is how you set up your EV-1000. If you cannot view this video for any reason or you're watching this and then say you're on the spot and, uh, and you have to set this up, for some reason you're not able to watch the video, we're going to have also um, our clip that has the set of instructions for you. And that's it.